Haïti, Haïti, c'est un pays vraiment fragile. La chose la plus chère d'Haïti, l'eau, l'eau, courant, la nourriture, ça vraiment cher. Haiti is not the easiest place to travel. Despite being located on the same island as the Dominican Republic, which is famous for being a vacation paradise, Haiti has been faced with quite a few problems in the past. Just 12 years ago in 2010, Haiti was struck by a magnitude 7.0 earthquake, which left hundreds of thousands of people dead and more than one and a half million people homeless, which is a lot, especially considering that the country had only around 9.9 .9 million inhabitants at the time. It is also the poorest country in the Americas and according to various sources claiming to be citing the United Nations, it is also the most dangerous country in the world. I could not confirm this, however. But I really wanted to go check it out on my Latin America trip a few months ago, so I flew to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic to meet up with my friend Luca, because, to be honest, neither of us wanted to go alone. Where are we? So we wanted to take an Uber to the city, but then the Uber said for some reason like the, the $10 price wasn't valid. I wanted us to pay $35. So we were like, hell no. There was a guy on a motorcycle, it was like, so the bus stop's kind of far away. Should I take you? And we were like, yeah, okay, why not? So then he took us to some place, and we have no idea where we are. But uh, now here's a bus and people say that it's going to, to the city. One thing that opened my eyes a bit was that for most people from Europe or North America, the Dominican Republic is always seen as this tropical paradise. But right in the first hours of our trip, it was clear that this is also just a normal country with its more beautiful and less beautiful places. I remember thinking like, wow, what kind of place is this? This is not at all how I imagined the Dominican Republic to look like. But turns out we were just dropped off in this kind of ghetto area of the city. We then walked to the hostel to drop off our stuff. Then we wanted to get the bus tickets to Haiti for the following day. But they said we'd have to come back the next morning. Okay, so we just bought our tickets to Port-au-Prince and they said there's some like problem with the border or something that if we have to go back then we go the next day, that's what they said. But yeah, I just hope we make it to Port-au-Prince now. Okay, so we just bought the bus tickets and now we're in the bus to Port-au-Prince. It was actually very, very expensive. $165 uh, for two people, so... $165! Wow! Yeah, that is just... Taxes. The ticket price consisted of the actual price for the ticket, the tourist tax for the Dominican Republic and tourist tax for Haiti. So then we were on our way from Santo Domingo to Port-au-Prince, which is the capital of Haiti. An alternative for Port-au-Prince would have been Cap Haitien or Cap Haitian. Apparently it's safer and you can walk around more freely. But I have to admit that saying I've been to Port-au-Prince is definitely more impressive than Cap Haitian. So the food on the bus is definitely not vegetarian or vegan and it's not like you can choose what you want, they just hand it out and either you take it or you don't. The cabbage was really spicy for some reason, I think they put like pepperoni in it or something and the meat tasted exactly like German Schweinebraten. But they said it was typical Creole food from Haiti so I guess now I know a bit about Haiti's food culture. At some point in the early afternoon we made it to the border. What you can see here is the Dominican border checkpoint where we got our exit stamp from the Dominican Republic. And while Luca got through passport control really quickly, no problem, they seem to have some kind of problem with my passport. I, I don't know what was wrong with my passport, but for some reason I had to like scan it a couple of times, looked at every stamp. I, I don't even understand why, but, but something was wrong. But he looked at like the passport, scanned it a couple of times, called his colleague and I don't know, put the stamp on. But removed it again, like like he didn't didn't stamp it, but he put like the stamp thing on, and then was like, no, I can't stamp this. I think the banknotes look kind of rancid, to be honest. Then we went to the Haitian side. First step was to get our bags checked at customs. Okay, we're now at the Haitian immigration. Got this form to fill out. That's our bus. And right now, this is, I think, the customs, so they're checking the bags. But we were put to the side, the gringos, as always. <laughs> yeah. Then we walked over to passport control, which was this tiny room in the sort of basement of a house. The guys in there really didn't care what we wanted, they just scanned our passport and stamped it. One thing I find really sad by the way is that nowhere on these stamps it says Haiti. It's a little disappointing but oh, it is what it is. Actually we were kind of glad it all went this smooth at the border because Luca was really scared we would face some corruption. But as I said no one cared about why two European white guys wanted to go to apparently the most dangerous country in the world. 
So we stepped back on the bus and Luca and I both said that the first impression of Haiti reminded us a lot more of Africa than Latin America. It was super sandy, everything seemed really run down and there weren't so many people on the street. Anyway, the drive through Haitian civilization was only around one hour and then we arrived in Pétionville, which is a suburb of Port-au-Prince. Arriving there we were scared like hell, because we didn't know what to expect, so we decided to take a taxi to our place. And that's when the first thing happened. When asking for the price, the assistant or something of the driver, I didn't really understand why there were two people, said $10. To look at me that seemed fair, so we hopped in the car. Then on our way she suddenly started making some weird calculations with currency exchanges and whatnot, we didn't really understand anything. But she kept calculating stuff on one of those old Nokia phones, you know, the ones that look like a brick, but because we were talking a mix of English, Spanish and French and she calculated stuff in Dominican pesos, US dollars and Haitian goods, it was a complete mess. So when we arrived at the hotel, they wanted $30 from us. We said no, we agreed on 10, you said $10. So then a big discussion started, the drivers wouldn't leave and after a big discussion we decided to give them a few more bucks and then they left. They wanted like $30 from us or something for 10 minutes. Complete scam. Great first encounter in Haiti. So far, Port-au-Prince, very very like messy city I think, very like wild bustling. Then we were in our hotel which we found on booking.com and we chose it because apparently the owner of the hotel can tell you exactly where to go and where you should rather not go. Also he was from New York and spoke perfect English and that was actually very true. So he told us where we should go, where we should not go and then we were out exploring Porto Prince for the rest of the day. Merci, merci. How do we go into Porto Prince? Alone without anyone. Yay. So right now we're in what is probably the safest part or one of the safest parts of the city. The guy said, yeah, you can walk along here. And it does seem pretty normal, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like any other big city. Or not big city, it's kind of like, I don't know, some medium sized city. Some people, quite a lot of people to be fair, look at us. Especially because I'm here with the GoPro. <laughs> I mean, and you, you're, you're hard to, to oversee. That's true. We're in Port-au-Prince, can you believe that? <laughs> Can you believe that? One thing that was super funny was the fact that everyone looked at us and tried to start a conversation, usually in French. Luke and I both know some French, so I can show you a few conversations here, but don't expect too much from us. Okay, we're being screamed at quite often. No matter where we go, people do like try to talk to us or more scream to us. <laughs> Other people just stare at us and yell, but I think that's just normal. We then walked around some more, saw some government buildings, and I think then we left the really safe area. <laughs> Here you can even see barricades from the protests that happened earlier that day. Yeah. Hey, you. Hey. Bonsoir. D'Allemagne. <laughs> the city also has a yeah. big garbage yeah. problem. There's trash on the street everywhere. Literally right behind me. Garbage, piss, and whatever. But people are very skilled here. Nice yeah, to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. Have a good one. See you. Next time. Next time. But still, the people are friendly and they love to talk to us. Especially this guy had a big desire of sharing his opinion. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, Haiti fragile. La population, ouais. souffrit de la nourriture, souffrit de l'eau. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de l'eau. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de la nourriture pour consommer la population. C'est vraiment dangereux pour
la vie de la population. Hi man. How are you? Je suis un journaliste. Je suis un Haïti est fragile pour moi et pas pour vous. Ouais. 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 Il faut le faire, man. Il faut le faire, le vidéo, man. Parce que. Pas nous, tu es privé. Ouais. Les choses sont vraiment chères. Haïti. La chose le plus chère d'Haïti. L'eau. L'eau. Courant. La nourriture. Ça vraiment cher. Toutes les choses sont essentielles, non? Toutes les choses sont vraiment chères, man. We talked to those guys for like an hour or two, and because it was getting dark, it was time for us to head back to the hotel. Would you say Haiti is a place that you need to visit? No. True. Um, it depends on who you are. If you're just the average traveler that's in the Dominican Republic and ask themselves, oh, should I board across the border? Then no. Yeah. If you come here after you've informed yourself and you actively decide that this is a place you want to visit, you know what you're getting yourself into, then I would say absolutely yes, because it's not as bad as everyone says. Absolutely. I expect it's much area, worse. Yeah. At least not in this area. But we know where we're going, more or less, because we've talked to someone that lives here. So. Yeah. Don't just come here without a plan and, and just walk anywhere. That's a bad idea. Okay, so now we're at the place where all the ministries are and the courts and stuff. So there we have like, I think a general court it is or something. There we have the, the Ministry of Finance. <laughs> I think they did quite a bad job in the country, to be honest. Over there you can see the Supreme Court of Haiti. Port-au-Prince. And in the city of Port-au-Prince you can actually see pictures of Moiselle everywhere. He's the president, the, the last Haitian president who was assassinated in his own palace uh, in July, I think, last year. Okay, so we just got some Haitian beer, Prestige. Apparently, it's like the best beer in the world. <laughs> yeah, and That's they want how some he made sort it of price. They're like this little like, golden thing here, World's, World Beer Cup 2012, they won, apparently. World Beer Cup 2012? I mean, so they won the World Beer Cup twice. twice. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that's impressive, though. Cheers. I like it. It's actually not bad. Yeah, it's, it's actually, actually really, really nice, good, yeah. yeah. Since because of the protests all the shops and markets were closed and we felt like there wasn't much to do for us, we asked the hotel owner if he could organize a ride to the bus station for us. Probably the most intense motorcycle ride of my life. Three people with two huge bags on just one motorcycle through Port-au-Prince. Also the driver was just some random dude like the cousin of one of the workers in the hotel that agreed to take us. We couldn't talk a word to him because of the language barrier. So we had to hope everything was organized well by the hotel. And then, of course, he drove us to the wrong place. It was a mess, but after some explaining, he understood where to take us and then it all went well. That is, until it was time to pay him. Same story as the day before, the hotel owner guaranteed us a price of $10, the driver wanted 30. Luckily, after a phone call, it was all sold. But then the really big problem came. You see, there's one bus from port au prince to the Dominican Republic per day. And obviously you need to buy a ticket for that bus at the counter in cash. Now guess who didn't have any cash on them? Finding yourself in Haiti without any cash is probably one of the worst situations you can find yourself in. We didn't have time to run to an ATM because the bus was about to leave and also the area really wasn't safe. Luckily, the lady from the bus company bought a ticket for us with her own money and we could pay it back to her in cash as soon as we arrived in the Dominican Republic. Otherwise, we would have been really screwed. So, if you want to go too, definitely bring enough US dollars. 